Climatologists predict that the temperature of our seas will rise by 2 to 4 degrees over the next 100 years and double their current CO2 levels. Such increases could see a dramatic change in the species of fish we see living in environments like our coral reefs, a usually biodiverse region of the world. Goran Nielsen from the University of Oslo has been exposing fish to these changes to see the consequences on their survival. And it turns out there are some marked changes in their behaviour. At just a 2 or 3 centigrade increase in temperature, you have quite a big increase in the resting metabolic rate, the rate of oxygen they need just to maintain basal functions. We also find that their maximum rate of oxygen uptake is not really affected by temperature, so they're not getting better at taking up oxygen. And as a result of this, the difference between the resting and the maximum rate of oxygen uptake is getting smaller and smaller. And at maybe 32, 33 centigrade, some species are using all their capacity to take up oxygen just to sustain their basic survival. They have no energy left for, for doing the important things in life, which is feeding, growing and reproducing. So they're essentially as an individual at that end. The species of fish living in coral reefs are thought to already be living at their extremes. So even small increases in temperature will cause these changes in their evolution. And when combined with increases in carbon dioxide levels, the situation gets worse. CO2 has quite different effects compared to temperature. The main and most worrying effects you find is on the behaviour of the fishes. And these are not obvious behavioural effects. If you just look at the fishes, they look quite normal. But when you start testing them in a different way, you will find that they're quite abnormal. For example... Instead of shying the smell of a predator, which they normally do, they get attracted to the smell of the predator. They also get attracted to the wrong kind of plant smell. The runoff from a coral reef island is not so attractive anymore. They get attracted to the smell of swamps instead. And uh, they lose something called lateralization. People are left or right-handed, but fishes are also, in a similar way, left or right-handed. They, for example, will prefer to turn right if you chase them or prefer to turn left. They lose that, which means it will take longer for them to make a decision when to escape. They also lose the ability to learn. If you're trying to just do some simple learning tasks, for example, to connect different smells, they lose that ability when they are in these future CO2 levels. Nielsen's team have since discovered the mechanism underlying these changes in behaviour, and it comes down to a single aspect of their central nervous system. So we, we now think we, we identify a certain neurotransmitter receptor in the brain of these fishes that are, is responsible for these behavioral abnormalities, and it's the GABA-A receptor. It's an ion channel for chloride and bicarbonate, and it's exactly these two ions that we think is changing in the fish when they expose the higher CO2 levels. We can cure the fish, actually, by blocking this receptor with a moderate dose of something called gaba -seen. If you do that we can reverse these behavioural changes and the, the fish will start behaving normally again. The solution, however, will not be to fill our seas with gabazine, which will be both expensive and damaging to the environment. But Nielsen believes this neurological insight could help predict and plan for the future. If we can pinpoint a mechanism that gives us some predictive power, because then we know what could go wrong and we could maybe identify the types of animals that are most in risk of being affected. So if we guide us where to do future experiments. It will also help us maybe identify mechanisms that a fish could use to counteract these effects. Such changes in environmental conditions will inevitably see the evolution of species and dominance of certain fish that are better adapted to the changing conditions. The survival of the fittest. But there is two things the fish could do. The simplest thing is to acclimate. That's something you do over a lifespan or often over just a few days or weeks. When we have been looking at adult fish and effect of temperature, we don't see an ability to acclimate, or very small ability to acclimate. The second thing they could do is uh, may maybe if you grew up from the egg stage, uh, you will have a more plastic ability to, to, add, to add acclimate. And there we see some effects. So if you grow a fish up from the egg stage at a higher temperature, they will coop a little bit better as adults. But the, the, the really interesting thing, and this is Australian colleagues of mine that done this, is that the offspring of these fishes will cope better. And that could be something due to epigenetics. The parents will somehow influence the next generation to do a little bit better at a higher temperature. So what does the future hold? If carbon emissions continue to rise at their current pace, 
it's inevitable that the fish seen in our reefs will change and the diversity seen by millions of tourists visiting these regions each year will fall as certain key players begin to dominate. So, so what I think will happen is that some species will do well, some species will do very poorly, and we will have much less of biodiversity in a place like a coral reef, which is well known for its biodiversity. A few species might take over and uh, on the cost of a lot of species that would disappear. That was Professor Goran Nielsen from the University of Oslo, who will be delivering the Physiological Society's keynote lecture at the IUPS Congress in Birmingham in the UK in July 2013. I'm Mira Senthilingam.